electricity and rust, an essential part of the game that most new players know nothing about. Today we're going to go over how to power up your essential devices in the game. So we have three ways to generate power and rust. First one is a small generator. This will consistently generate 40 power as long as it's turned on with low grade. Next we have the solar panel. This will take the sun and generate 20 power as long as your solar panel is pointed towards the middle of the map. And by middle of the map, the sun goes across the middle of the map. So if you're on the north side of the map, you want to place your solar panel facing south. And if you're on the south side of the map, you want to place your solar panel facing north. Next is the windmill. This will generate around 100 power. It all depends on the different elevation you place it. So it can generate anywhere between like 60 and 150, depending on how high you place it. The higher, the better. Next, we have different types of batteries. So here we have the large, medium, and small battery. The large battery will generate 100 power, the medium 50, the small 10. Most of the time, you're going to want to go with the large battery due to its cost efficiency and power output. Now we'll go over how to combine the different power generators with the batteries to get power to our devices. So we'll come over here. Um, so we have a solar panel. We can connect this straight to the battery or we can use a root combiner right here and connect two or more power sources and combine their end total energy output. So this would be a combined output of 40 power. We can then use the combined energy output and plug it into the battery to charge it. What we can do from there is use the power output to connect it to a series of electrical branches. Now these electrical branches will each give you allow you to power one device. So for our examples here we're going to be using a heater so what you do is you connect the branch the power your battery to the power in then you connect this branch to the next branch and then this branch to the next branch and then you have a bunch of these branch out outlets that you can use. For our purposes we're going to be powering this heater. And there you go it uses three power and it powers the heater. Now on some electrical devices where they have what's called an electrical pass-through and what that is 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 it allows you to power another device so I could use another heater and power it here if there was another heater here but if we're gonna want to do that we're gonna have to make sure we give it six power so that it can power the other heater next we'll be going into the different type of defenses you can use with electricity so the first one and the primary one you're gonna want to use are auto turrets they're the most power efficient they're always on and they always shoot people they take 10 power from your circuit and are highly effective against raiders. The next one that you can use is a Tesla coil. Now these would require some more advanced electricities. These can use like anywhere from 10 to 35 power and the more power you put on it, the stronger it is. So this one's hooked up to 35 watts of power and it, it's pretty strong. But as you can see, it has to be hooked with the switch. So it's pretty inefficient when the auto turret is, is there ready to shoot people. Next is the SAM turret. The SAM turret uses 25 power and can be used to shoot down anything flying. This includes minis, scrap helis, and MLRS rockets. In order to be an effective against MLRS rockets, you will need about 3 to 4 SAM sites, as they do not instantly shoot them. Next, we'll be going over a quick little demo circuit I made. So, and if you didn't know, you can change the wire color with y by holding R. Um, here if we look here we have four solar panels so what I did is hook them both up to a root combiner and then hooked these two up to the root combiner and then I hooked both the outputs of these two to another root combiner so it's root combining this one and this one into here and here and it gives us a total output from all four of the solar panels next we bring this output into our battery and then our battery will begin to be charged we then take the output of the battery and hook it up to a series of electrical branches that will allow us to power all the devices in our base. So for this example, we have two auto turrets here, so I can go ahead and power both of them. So I'm going to set it to 10, the required power for an auto turret, and both the auto turrets will turn on. Next we have an example of some daisy chained devices. So these use the electrical pass through, so here we go, we have six coming out, it's going to come along here. And then we come to this heater, which uses three. And then we have the pass through here, which gets linked up to this conveyor, which uses another, which uses one. And then it comes to our light. It also uses one. 
But not all devices require their own electrical branch. Some devices have electrical pass-through, which you can use to power multiple devices from one branch. Some other important things to keep in mind are you can use a root combiner as an extender if your power source is too far away from your battery. Um, another cool thing is when you pick up batteries, it actually saves the amount of charge in them. So if you're going for a fob, you can just charge up a battery, pick it up, drop it there, and you don't have to worry about the power. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to respond to all the comments on this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about electricity and rust. If you liked the video, like it, and you want to see more Rust content, please subscribe.